Hi, welcome back to CVN305. This is the second torsion example in which we compute actually uh, torsion and the amount of twist in a shaft. Uh, this is actually somewhat more involved because it's actually a statically indeterminate problem. We'll see how that works. So the, uh, let me read the problem out because it may be too small for you to see. Uh, th that I cannot help because of the screen size. Two solid shafts, steel shafts are fitted together. So that's the shaft AB and then the shaft CD. So they are both fitted together and then with four bolts. But what has happened is the bolts are a little bit loose. So the bolts are a little bit undersized. And what happens is it allows the shaft to rotate just a little bit. So it looks like this. So here is the here are the two shafts which are wetted by the bolts. But because of the because of the fact that the bolts are a little bit loose, it allows a little bit of rotation. Okay, the amount of rotation that allows that is allowed between the bolts is 1.5 uh, 1.5 uh, degrees, which is about 0 0.026 radians. And we know that the shear modulus in the shaft is 11.2. So let me let me write the prominent items down so that you can see that. So first item is a mismatch is 0 0.15 degrees sorry 1.5 degrees which is 0 0.026 uh, radians and in gears when this happens this is called backlash and it's very bad for gears even this particular flange torque setup that's not a very good idea but nevertheless the second thing that's given to us is that the shear modulus of this is 11.2 times 10 to the 6 psi which turns out to be uh, 11.2 times 10 to the 3 ksi okay and the torque applied the text says 420 kilo put, uh, kilo pound foot that's a huge huge torque the actual thing is 350 pound foot so that's what we are going to use 350 pound foot which turns out to be 350 uh, times 12 that will convert it into pound inches times 10 to the minus 3 that will give it to me in kip inches which turns out to be 4.2 kip inches okay so not 420 but it turns out to be 4.2 kip that's the number i'm going to use the book may have may not have used it but that's different okay so the question is what happens if the torque that the red arrow, the torque is applied to flange C. Is it obvious to you that if I had the two flanges like this, this is this is flange C, this is flange B. If the torque is applied initially, the flange C will rotate a little bit and then it will get locked. Okay. So then after that, the, the two of them will rotate together. Okay. So that's what is happening. So the question is, what is the shear stress? in the bars B, A and C, D. Okay, so as usual, our first step, remember our notation, this means C, C, W, thumb direction. As we saw in the previous video, right? So first thing to do is, I'm going to draw a side view of the whole thing and I'm going to draw a free body diagram. So always the idea for drawing a free body diagram, don't draw free body diagrams piece by piece. What you should do is draw the biggest free body diagram you can with the fewest number of cuts you can. And then if you don't find the answer, go for more and more detailed free body diagrams. Okay. This is kind of hard to explain, but I'll show you what I mean. The biggest free body diagram I can draw is actually something that cuts through both of them. Can you see? I'm going to cut here, I'm going to cut here. So there are two cuts. I'm marking the cuts with uh, with uh, yellow and the point is it's at the cuts where the torsion has to be exposed. Okay, so I'm going to draw this free body diagram side view. FPD side view showing only talk. Notice that I usually try to put a title on the free body diagram so that you know what you're looking at. Because of course there will be like, you know, gravity and all of that. We are ignoring all of that. 
So when I draw the free body diagram, I'm going to draw it fairly large. So it's going to look like this. Never draw tiny free body diagrams, okay? Draw large ones so that it's easy for you to see what's going on. So this point is B, this point is C, and this is A, this is D. Okay, and it's given to us. I'm going to draw the external forces here. So first thing is, this is an external force and it goes that way. Can you see that? That's the external force and the magnitude and the, and the magnitude of the force is 4.2 kip inch. How about on this exposed surface? We know what should happen. I should point the, the torque away from the body. I'm sorry, I said external force. I should have been careful. It should, it's external torque. So there's the torque pointing away. There's a the torque pointing away. Okay, and by now you should know the notation for the torque. It should say T A B and T C D. This is the only free body diagram you can draw. Uh, if the minute you cut any other thing, it will go on exposing more and more forces. So it's not going to help us. This is our only free body diagram. And it tells us that if I do summation of torque, keeping this way positive, I will get minus TAB plus 4.2 minus, sorry, plus TCD equal to 0. So I'm going to write this as TAB minus TCD equal to 4.2. The unit is kip inch for this. And this I'm going to call it as equation 1. Okay, we're going to use this as we go on. Now, I'm going to draw the displacement diagram. We are done with this. So now our next thing is displacement diagram. And the way that's going to look, again, I'm going to draw this large so that we can talk about the displacements. So, and my, this is A, I'm going to put, so that's phi A equal to 0, that's the start of it, can you see that's that end, phi A is 0, then here I have two things, on this side I have phi B, and on this side I have phi C, if this was completely rigid, connection then phi b will be equal to phi c right now it is not so that's phi b and that's phi c and the last one is phi d equal to zero all of them are pointing like that right so now we are ready to use our constitutive law which basically say delta phi equal to T delta L over GJ. I'm trying to get this kind of written up, you know, in shorter and shorter version. So in our case, for section, let us call this section 1, let us call this section 2, and let's call this section 3, okay? So let us look at section 1, and the length here is 2 feet. This length is 3 feet. This is all given to us. The dia here is 1.5 inch. The dia here is 1.25 inches. That's also given to us. So we can do for the first section, this will give me phi B minus phi A equals TAB LB minus LA divided by GAB J A B. Right? And we know already, already know that phi B is 0. L B minus L A. So if I'm measuring L from here, I'm going to mark L like that. 
LB minus LA is that length, this length from here to there and that turns out to be uh, 2 feet. So this is TAB times 2 feet times 24 divided by 11.2 times 10 to the um, 3 times JAB and JAB is pi DAB to the 4th over 32 which turns out to be 0 0.0239 sorry 0 point Two three nine seven inch to the fourth. So I'm going to replace this with zero point two three nine seven denominator. That's for this section. Section two will gives me phi. Uh, D minus phi C equals TCD times LC minus LD sorry LD minus LC divided by GDC JDC LD minus LC is total length LD from, from this point to that point is LD from this point to that point is LC, sorry, to that point is LC, so it is 3 feet, right? So what happens is, I will get, this is TCD times 36 inches, because that's 3 feet, divided by 11.2 times 10 cube times JDC, equal to pi d c d to the fourth over 32 which turns out to be 0 0.4970 inch fourth so this will give me 0 0.4970 inch fourth okay and we know that phi d is 0 so the first one tells me what's the value of phi b the second one tells me what's the value of phi c because it's a negative so please notice this is where our sign convention comes in. Notice minus Vc is all of this. Okay, so be careful if I keep my sign convention and I always do further side minus the nearest side, things will work out very easily. Okay. The last item, what about section 3? Section 3 says this, right? Section 3 says the side C will be a little bit ahead of side B by an angle of uh, 1.5 degrees. Okay, so that means phi C minus phi B is 1.5. So phi C is this, phi B is this, that's the difference between them is 1.5. So this tells me phi C minus phi B equal to 1.5 degrees, which is 0 0.0262 radians. So that means I'll get the following equation. Phi C is negative of this minus, so I'm going to substitute from here and that. Please check the signs. Can you see that? So that's why I get a minus sign here. Minus TCD times 36 divided by 11.2 times 10 to the 3 times 0 0.4970 inch fourth plus sorry, minus this guy TAB times 24 divided by 11.2 times 10 cubed times 0 0.2397 equals 0 0.0262. Notice my first equation gave me one relationship between TAB and TCD. That's this. My displacement analysis gave me another equation between TAB and TCD. And we have to solve these two things. So let me write it in a way that's convenient for me to solve. So I'm going to write it as 
TAB minus TCD equal to 4.2 and the other one if you simplify it a little bit you will get 6.46 this is this equation TCD plus 8.943 TAB equal to minus 26. Two simultaneous equations. If you have a calculator, you can solve it or substitute and solve or whatever you like. And then you will get TAB equals 0 0.075 tip inch. And TCD will turn out to be minus 4.125 tip inch. This is, these are your two values. From that you can calculate the stresses, sigma in the, sorry, shear stress, tau max in the section AB is 16 TAB over pi DAB cubed, which is 16 times 0 0.075 divided by pi times 1.25 cubed which will turn out to be 0 0.196 ksi and if I do tau max in the section cd I will get it is 16 tcd divided by pi dcd cubed which will be 16 times minus 4.125 divided by pi times d c d cubed which turns out to be minus 6.22 KSI. The answers that I have here are slightly different from what is there in the text in the back of the book because I believe that they have made some, some change in the numbers because if you can see even in the book numbers they don't they don't exactly match okay so this is the this is the numbers that i got so now what what is this tau max equal to 0 0.196 and tau max equal to 0 0.26 minus 0 0.622 mean so what it means is that if i look at the cross section remember i told you the cartoon in your head should be something that looks like a windmill that goes round and round so first of all it tells you and i showed you this picture right so the positive and negative times signs tell you which way the windmill is going. So positive sign. So what it means is that in the section AB, the windmill looks like this. Goes counterclockwise. This is the shear stress windmill. The maximum shear stress is occurring here on here and here outer fiber. That's the maximum. I'm going to mark it in yellow so that you can see that. And how much is the maximum? It's 0.196 KSI. In the section CD, you will see that the windmill looks exactly the opposite. I'm going to draw this so that you can see it. So if tau max is greater than 0, then windmill goes CCW. If tau max less than 0, 
windmill goes clockwise and the magnitude is 6.22 ksl can you see the difference in the windmills that's what it is so i want you to understand that this number is 6.22 and all the others vary linearly down make us clear that's what it is so please remember when you have to do torsion problems you first have to draw free body diagrams and get the sign convention right the second thing you have to do is to do the displacement diagrams and you have to do displacement section by section and then you have to do some manipulations okay algebraic manipulations this is the heart of it so this takes some effort to do as things go along but the procedure is more or less fixed thank you